everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with part one of the Simon Says June 2018 card kit. I know, it's the beginning of June. They haven't released July yet. I know, I know. But there's some beautiful things in here. There's the Distress res uh, Resist Spray, the beautiful 3D folder, the stamp set, the paper. So everything is just magnificent, and of course you do get your inspirational sheet. So I played around with these papers a lot. Now, we all knew that the feather was going to be part of the collection. Absolutely. So I took that pattern paper and I used my Penny Black Vintage Frame die and I cut that out and I grabbed my Ranger Emboss It pen. So this is like a Versamark pen. Everywhere that I'm tapping this down, it's, it's a clear embossing ink. I grabbed a, an embossing powder from my stash and it's called Eggplant Pearl and it's from Michaels and it's from the Recollections color or collection, excuse me. And it's absolutely gorgeous. It's a very deep purple. And I just thought just adding that for dots in the background, um, you're going to see me use this for the sentiment that I chose. Um, and as I keep on looking at it, you're going to see that I'm actually going to add it to be the vein within the feathers. So again, these kits, they give you so much, but we also do have a stash for the most part. Maybe not everybody does, um, but there could be something that you have in your stash that you could also add to the kits to accent and embellish them. And that's what I want to show here. Um, yes, you could have stopped just using a die or cutting out this piece of pattern paper and stamping your sentiment right on it. And it would have been as gorgeous. So those are the things that I want everyone to think about when you're watching these videos. You know what? I can stop right here and my card is still going to be beautiful. You don't have to do every single step. You may have something that could replace this. Maybe you only have white embossing powder. The white embossed tips of the feathers would be absolutely gorgeous. So that's what I want you to get from my videos. And I know a lot of you do, but I like to keep explaining that because all we have to do every day, at least at some part of the day, is create. That's all we have to do. And that's all I'm looking for you is to do. Create. Don't worry about anything else. That was my little ramble. Sorry. So I'm going to grab a piece of fun foam. I use my double-sided strong super adhesive from uh, Uline.com, which I absolutely love for my fun foam applications. And I'm going to put that down on my four and a quarter by five and a half top folding card base. And in case I don't say that, the majority of my cards usually are A2, top folding. Um, but there is a card in this one that's going to be a little bigger. Mm -hmm. So next up, I'm going to take another piece of pattern paper and I'm going to use my Lawn Fawn Stitch Rectangle die. And I'm going to, it's one of the smaller sizes. I grabbed a piece of black scrap cardstock from my stash because I keep everything. And I'm using my Versamark ink and my white embossing powder. The white embossing powder that I'm using there is also from Recollections as well. And it's called Snow. I'm going to grab one of my Everyday Sentiment banners from Lawn Fawn. And I'm going to cut that out because no matter how I try, I cannot cut straight. And yeah, here's the laziness coming. I don't feel like grabbing one of my cutters. <laughs> They're just below this table. So. I'm going to grab that piece of pattern paper and I'm going to fussy cut one of these flowers out. And that's something else that you can look at. If you have a lot of pattern paper and it's got big images, fussy cut them out. They can give you images onto your card. Hmm. Maybe I just gave away what episode seven of my simplicity series is about. Hmm. Could be. So once I have that, I know, today's been a long day, guys. I'm having too much fun today, I think. So once I have that fussy cut, there's the vintage photo. I bet you were surprised when you didn't see it on the first card. And I'm going to go around the edge of the panel that I've cut and around that flower. And I'm going to prop that flower up 
with some foam squares. So it's almost like I've cut the same flower out, but because I'm going to put it on top of the original one, it's going to give it some dimension and some texture at the same time. So that's what I'm looking for um, with this. And again, it's something very simple. I'm going to grab another piece of fun foam because I do like to use that to prop up my panels because I have no more double-sided 3M foam tape. Yep, there's my secret. And I'm going to place my sentiment right there in the upper right-hand corner. I'm going to use, right there, I'm using my art glitter glue. I do use a lot of different adhesives. Um, and I know, I believe someone had asked if I would do a video of what my favorite things are, what are the things that I can't live without and I think I'm going to do that. Um, it, it's going to be coming out. So look, look to that because you can see I use so many different items and there is a method to my madness. I grabbed my key lime nouveau drops and I just placed some drops along the card and that finishes card number two. So for card number three, this is where the five by seven card base comes in and the beautiful, huge stamp. So if you keep looking, you can see, yeah, that's my setup. Yay. And then the top of my head. So I'm going to prep my Bristol cardstock. This is my Bristol vellum with my anti-static tool. I'm going to use my Versamark ink. This stamp, I am amazed at how huge and the size of this stamp. And I just hate cutting into it. Um, I have to be honest. I just don't like cutting into those stamps. So that's why we went with a five by seven card base um, side folding. So after I have that stamped, I'm going to pull out my gold embossing powder and I'm going to cover the entire image. The detail in this image is, it's absolutely amazing. There's so many things that you can do with this stamp. Um, I used it a couple times, um, but I really did have fun with the papers. Um, but you, you do see this stamp throughout the two videos because part two will be coming out as well. I'm going to heat set the embossing powder so that we have this beautiful shiny gold going across the card. Now this panel right now is cut at four and a half by six. Because again, I just take a sheet of the Bristol vellum, which is usually nine by 12 and I quarter it. Now, if you've seen some of my videos before, uh, there was a video that I did, I believe it was a couple weeks ago, where I just used my finger daubers and my distress oxides. Because in case you're new, I love my distress oxides. They are my favorite inks. Um, and all I'm doing, I'm just putting dots all over this piece. Uh, you want to make sure that you do have to do this on either a watercolor panel or a Bristol. You could do this on mixed media paper. You need a piece of paper that's going to take water well. Um, so regular cardstock is not going to do it. it it's just not going to hold what I'm about to do. So once I have the dots, and this looks very odd, I'm not blending, I'm just dabbing and making it look all measly going on right there. You just need water and you just need to spray it. So it can be any type of sprayer. I'm using my finger just to get them moving. You can see how it's coming out onto the side. Um, and I just let it go. I'm going to pull in my ranger heat tool to dry this this is a different heat you can use this to emboss as well I, I do like my wagner embossing tool because yeah there's like no other but i do like to use my ranger heat tool when i'm doing art journaling or drying a panel like this or watercolor panels i'm taking this piece of paper towel and i'm just rubbing over the embossed areas so that i can get that the embossing powder shiny because some of the distress oxides were on top of it. I'm looking at this and <clears throat> again the the excuse me the penny my penny black antique frame was going to come in and you can see I'm just moving this around and what's happening is it's very painful for me to cut into that panel. 
I just don't want to lose any of those markings. So here I'm trying to remember how to use my cutter and realize that it wasn't pulled over to the side. So I'm creating my five by seven base. So I'm taking a piece of cardstock and I'm cutting it um, 10 by seven. And that's going to give me a side folding five by seven card base. And this is the Gina K ivory cardstock that I'm using. I'm going to use my Martha Stewart scoreboard. I love that little scoreboard. It's never going to go anywhere. And my Tonic Studios bone folder. Um, it's probably not really called, it's called a paper creaser because it's really not Teflon. Um, it does have a metal tip to it and it is my favorite paper creaser. Uh, my second is actually one that comes from Stampin' Up. So um, those are the two paper creasers that I use because, you know, it's not Teflon. You know. It's not Teflon. <laughs> I took a piece of the gold card stock, and this was actually cut to be <laughs> five and a half by four and a quarter. I'm going to set that up in the upper corner. And I'm looking at this panel, and it's missing something. So I'm going to use my Versamark ink pad, and I'm going to go around the edges, not caring how it looks or how it's going on. And then I'm going to place around the gold embossing powder, and I'm going to heat set that with my heat gun. It's going to give it, it's like a distressed edge. I could have used the vintage photo, but I think the gold, I, I just acted like somebody asked, asked, you know, asked me a question, didn't I? Yeah. Um, but I, I just think that it gave it a, a different type of edge. And you can do that if you don't have embossing powders or Versamark inks, you could also use regular inks and do something like that as well. Now, this double-sided foam tape that I have, it, it's very strong, and I use it when I create watercolor panels um, or something that's going to have a lot of panel and it really warped. Um, but it's it's not for everyday card making. It's it's very frustrating, very sticky, very sticky. It gets all over the place. It's <laughs> You gotta constantly clean your scissors. It's, but it is super strong and it flattens the panel out. So I will continue to get that. It is again from Uline.com. I stamped happy birthday and then I heat set that with my gold, um, using my gold embossing powder and my heat tool. And I'm gonna use one of my Lawn Fawn banner dies again, just so I can have straight lines. And now again, I'm just playing with the placement of where this sentiment's going to go. Um, no, there wasn't a lot of time put into that panel, but the details, at least for me, for this stamp set are absolutely phenomenal. And I just don't want it covered. So that's something that I sometimes struggle with. So I finally found the perfect spot towards the top excuse me, towards the top. And I'm going to set that using foam squares. And I pulled in the Seabreeze Nouveau Drops. I'm sorry, I keep wanting, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> possible sneeze coming across. And I'm just placing them throughout. Now, again, what's great with these Nouveau Drops is, and since the oxides are water reactive, they will change the color just a little bit, um, which is pretty cool with how this looks once it's dried. I'm gently and lightly tapping my card just to balance out the Nouveau drops. So for card number four, I'm going to use the awesome 3D and I'm going to rip apart one of the envelopes. I know some of you are like, how can you use the envelope? They're so gorgeous. Yes. I very rarely mail cards, but I love this paper. Now, the envelopes, this paper is very thin. Um, it's, you know, it's like regular paper almost. So I was reading up, and I know uh, Sherry Carroll had shown this as well when it came to using these 3D embossing powders. Now, before we get to that, now what I'm doing with this pattern paper, I'm going to fussy cut around the edge, just leaving a little bit of a border. And then I'm going to set that aside because that's going to be part of the card, obviously. 
But when it comes to the 3D embossing folders, whether it's this beautiful Tim Holtz, yeah, I got the other ones, or whether it's other ones that Sizzix has, um, and I know there's other makers that have 3D folders, you want to be careful with with the paper. The, these 3D folders are really pushing the paper out, and these things are solid. I mean, it's it's thicker than one of the cutting plates. You want to, no matter what paper you use, any sprayer, you want to lightly mist your paper. You, you really do, yeah, water all over the place. Because this way, with this paper being so light, your the paper is not going to tear. It's not going to have holes in it. I'm going to show, you see those fingers, here's where I did not add water to the paper. And you can see, as I keep bringing it back and forth, I'm not quite sure why I didn't keep there. See the hole? That's because it really does strain against the paper in this folder. You're only using one cutting pad um, to put this through. And it is, it's thicker. It's more detailed than a general embossing folder. So you can use any papers in them, whether it's thick, whether it's the very thin papers, anything that you may have just spray them on both sides of the paper and then this way the fibers they won't break they'll bend so i hope that helps i know there's other videos out there that have shown this before but i just kind of i was kind of emphasizing it but just know that you can use any papers in them okay i'm going to trim this down so that it is measuring four by five and a quarter and I'm going to prop this panel that I fussy cut um, with some foam squares. Now, what I've done is I set it into my grid and I'm looking to see where four inches is. So that's where the edge of my <laughs> foam squares will be. So if you have a grid mat, use it or a piece of paper. It can really help. I'm going to set that down right on top of this panel and I'll be able to trim that right away with my long shears that I absolutely love and you can see both sides look beautiful um it, it's a very it's two very different effects when it comes to these folders um but either side you, you could do a lot with either side so give it a shot just remember spray spray but don't soak no soaking only misting. I set that directly down onto my four and a quarter by five and a half top folding card base and I grabbed a piece of vellum from my stash. I'm going to use the large beautiful sentiment and I'm going to stamp this down onto my piece of vellum using my Versamark ink and then I'm going to grab uh, my Ranger liquid platinum embossing powder. It is awesome. I love the the liquid platinum by Ranger is my absolute favorite of all of the embossing powders. Um, I just like the look of it. It, it morphs into a silver, a gold, um, or anything, but it, it's absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to again use one of my banner dies to cut that out. Um, wasn't quite sure if I wanted this on an angle. Um, but I knew, okay, it needs to be up in the blue. Um, but we do end up cutting off the two edges. And then we're going to adhere it down using my art glitter glue with some dots. I know you can see them through the vellum. Absolutely. But there's a reason why I'm okay with those because we're going to cover them up. So think about that. If you use vellum, try to use products that will... See my fingers going there? I'm like, okay, I know what you're all thinking. Um, try to use products that will cover up the glue when it comes to the vellum. Uh, I like the look of vellum. It kind of softens it, what's underneath it, just a little bit. And what I grabbed are, and what I'm finding I'm loving more and more, are the Studio Katya uh, crystals. And these are the Black Onyx crystals. Um, and usually when I buy a color like this, a very neutral color, I have to have more than one. So <laughs> we buy multiple and I'm just going to place them around. So you can see I'm actually putting them 
in the area where I know I have the glue underneath my vellum so that these will cover that up. I used black because of the pattern paper down below has some, it's either like a very dark navy blue or a black, but I figured the black would help accent it. I love these panels. I always buy them when they when the new ones come out. They are so much fun to play with. Um, and I was really excited when this one was in here. So I real quick grabbed my Arteza or Arteza, however we say that, uh, watercolor pencils. I've been playing around with these a lot. Um, I did have a video. I did do a review on them. Um, and I'm still liking them. I think they are great. Um, it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or if you've been doing this for years. Um, absolutely, I've got all different types, but these are just, they're just really nice to work with. So I'm just filling in my panel. I like to do all of the coloring first. You can see I have my aqua brush there to the right and my cloth that I will dab off onto. And some of the letters I'm filling with the colors halfway up so that I can blend the color so it can get lighter to the top. And then I'll be filling in some of the flowers and leaves onto the left hand or the right hand side. No, the left hand side when you turn it around, right? Now it's on the right. Um, but if you're interested in these and you want to know more about them, I'll link my video down below. Um, if you want to see exactly what I found, um, I did a comparison with these Spectrum Noirs and Derwent's. I always have to think before I say that, um, which Derwent's are different. Um, they're not just wood, they're not true watercolor pencils, but um, they are one of the more popular of everyone has. So here you can see I'm taking my aqua brush and I'm activating the pigment first. And once I have it activated, I'm kind of, what I'm doing is I'm not removing the water from my aqua brush because I will say these Nouveau aqua brushes have a nice control to the water. It's not flowing constantly, but I'm pulling off some of the pigment from the brush so that it's not one solid. So you can see I activate it, I pull it up, I clean it off, especially if I'm changing colors as well. Um, you can see with that blue, I definitely pulled off some of the blue so that I could drag it up to the top. And that's how I work with colored pencils. Um, I like the fact that you can shade with just one color. So you don't have to have, notice how I said have to, you don't have to have every single color in a watercolor pencil line. I just do because that's me. I must have all available choices by me at all times. Um, but if you keep buying the small sets from the different companies, you'll have all the colors because each one will be different. So think of it that way. Um, so that's what our panel looks like. And I'm going to cut this down because these are cut to be like four and a half um, by five and a half. It's, it's actually a little bit bigger than a general four and a half or four and a quarter by five and a half card base. And I'm just taking a little bit off each side and then again off the top and the bottom. This way I'll be able to have a border that goes around my panel. And I'm going to adhere that directly down onto my panel. I'm pulling in uh, my Faber-Castell um, ink pen, and I'm just going to put some stitching around the outside. This size of the pen is small, so it has an S on it. Pulled out my glossy accents, and I'm going to go over the word flowers, just to give that some dimension and texture. And plus, it'll help make it stand out a little more. Then I came back in with my art glitter glue and I want to put a crystal in the center of each of the flowers. And these are also by Studio Katya and they are called the sparkling crystals. So I'm just going to place them all around. The pencil that I'm using in my hand, it's called a wax pencil. This is used for these types of crystals when it comes to nail art. I don't know if you've ever seen the nail art with the small gems and crystals and everything, but that's what that's used for. And I get mine from Amazon. I like it. So here are the close-ups of the cards that we made today in the video. And again, this is part one of the Simon Says 2018 card kit. 
I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up. All the products that I used outside of the kit will be linked down below in the, in the video description. Now, I always seem to forget something. It never fails, but please let me know, and I will make sure you get that link and get that added to the description. If you have any questions or comments, I really do encourage you, please leave them down below, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. I hope everyone's having a great weekend. Mine's a little rainy and mucky, and that's why I sound the way that I do still. But I hope everyone's enjoying it, no matter what you're doing. But most important, everyone, and always, always remember, be creative.